What's up guys, my name is Luke. This is my van, Bobo. The 1989 Chevy G20 Beauville. So it's the top trim line. I've lived in the van since March, 2020. This is my cooler. I just use ice, I'm old school. And as we come inside, it's the kitchen. I got the stove, I got the drawers. You wanna look at my drawers? Oh, it's just all this good food in there. You know, all that good stuff. Got the avocados, the peanut butter, it's important. I live in a van because I love the lifestyle. I love the freedom. I love sleeping in quiet places by water and waking up there as well. You know, I love like waking up to a million dollar view and, and not having to pay a million dollars for it. Um, but I also live in a van because it's hard to live. You know, rent is too, is too expensive. And, um, you know, as a, as a musician, like in the arts community, it's like, the amount of work that we have to do for free to just maintain our ability to do the work, you know, we, we just don't make enough money to pay $1,500 a month for rent, you know? Well, the van solves that problem because it, I don't have to pay rent. I have insurance and that's it. Like if I'm completely out of money, I can just park and I'm just responsible for whatever, like $105 a month. And it's like knowing that gives you sort of like the freedom to take risks and, and try things and like, do work that doesn't pay because it might lead to something or whatever, you know? And when I first got the van, uh, it was completely empty. There was a bench seat here. And then like kind of a little bed frame had been built in the back, um, but like very basic, you know? My plan was to, as I said, get out of debt. Um, and so I had to build something I could live in, you know? Um, and the, the, the biggest thing I needed was um, space to like stretch on the floor is why I kept this all open and then um, a place to sit and, and play guitar. This is, the, this is the dining room. Got some some storage under the benches. And I don't know if you want to look in there. And, uh, and here and there, guitars, and then this will fold down into a bed. It is a plywood table. And it folds down. Queen size bed. <laughs> So this is just a, like literally just a foam mattress. And then, um, and then I basically cut it from the top and then from the bottom, like three quarters of the way down with a bread knife. <laughs> and, um, and it's enough that it stays together, but then it'll still fold out of the way. Like I love the sort of sense of shamelessness that you have to embody. You know, like if you want to have a good time living in a van, you have to be okay with waking up in the morning in front of a park full of kids playing, stand there, yawn and stretch, say good morning and start brushing your teeth. Like you have to be able to do that or you're going to have a bad time because you're like trying to hide like, oh, don't let anybody find out I'm doing this, right? Like you just have to be like, this is me, you know, this is it. <laughs> so that's probably my favorite thing. Like as far as, as far as like personal growth, like I feel like it's pushed me to be more just like, like I said, it's just like shameless, you know, unapologetically, authentically, just a guy that lives in a van and is cool with it, you know? <laughs> Sometimes you just pull up somewhere and there's another van and you get to know another van person, but then also people come and talk to you. And then I think also because you're out in the world so much more, like, you know, I spend every day at the park. So I have so many interactions with strangers where if I was at home practicing guitar, you know, I would just be there by myself, you know? But if I'm like walking around in a field with my guitar, people are like, hey, what's this guy doing, you know? So that's probably one of the best things. So I don't have a lot going on. Like these are just, I, my lighting is just on a little battery pack. Um, but I do have, I do have the um, secondary battery here, which um, which I can use if, if I want, you know? Um, but I find like with my lifestyle, um, I end up driving enough to just kind of, because this doesn't even have a solar, this is just, this is just from the alternator. I end up driving enough to keep this charged, but I also can charge most of my stuff while I'm driving. So I don't end up actually using that power that much. There's the outlet and here's the control just dangling there. And it is, it's one of the Amazon Chinese $300 heaters. Um, I think this is the three kilowatt version. Um, the thing's amazing. Like if anybody says anything bad online, they're wrong. Uh, don't trust them, it's amazing. Uh, when it was winter here, it was like minus 10 for about a week there, snow on the ground. Um, 
I was parked out a secret location for six days. I ran it, you know, probably like 12 to 16 hours a day. Um, on the lowest setting, I was too warm. I had the windows open and burned like $8 worth of fuel. Diesel. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as you can see, I just screwed it to the, uh, to the door there. And, uh, and that's all there is to see. <laughs> Specific challenges to my lifestyle are I can't stand up. That's the biggest one. Um, and then, I mean, obviously, like, there's people will come and tell you off. You know, people will phone the cops and get them to come clear you out uh, right when you find a really great spot. Um, <laughs> I have a storage space, um, which houses, like, most of my other gear and still a bit of furniture and other stuff like that. I mean, I just I just needed my guitars and, and I'm good. Once I've, once I, if I have the guitars and a place to, to sleep, I'm good. And the other challenges are like, I mean, honestly, like some of the funnier ones is like, I'll finish a gig, I'll get home at like three in the morning and like, ah, oh, I forgot to fill up my water, you know? Um, that and like, yeah, like being able to, for me again, with the, the musician lifestyle, like being not being able to like shower after a gig is kind of annoying. Although I do have like a, a little break I can set up if I need to. Um, but like not being able to have a nice long hot shower after work, you know? So I've got this pot right here and um, I'll just heat up a bit of water on the stove and just do it like that. It's very basic. I, I foresee myself, um, although I've said this for two years, I foresee myself putting some kind of sink in here. <laughs> but I mean, anybody that lives in a van knows, like once you start doing things a certain way, even though it's dumb, it just becomes the habit and then you forget that you were trying to make it better. <laughs> the floors have uh, just a layer of so I left this one in case I ever wanted to put the bench in. I can actually slide this piece of the floor out and put the bench back in. But I just use that pink stuff, uh, whatever this is called, which, you know, it's not amazing, but it keeps it so that at least the floor is not like cold on your feet, you know? And then the walls are insulated with Roxel. And then, yeah, I did the foam on the back of these as well. I didn't show you this before. These are like, you know, you can just pop these out. And so I insulated that with a bit of the foam as well. Yeah, it's nice to be able to open it up and get some light in, you know? I really like light. I like light a lot. <laughs> and um, so I wanted to be able to open it up, you know? I have clothes and food because I like to stay warm and be fashionable. And um, I also like to be fed. Um, I have water because <laughs> you need to stay hydrated. I have, uh, you know, some surf gear, a skateboard for activities. And, um, and then I have my guitars. That's it. That's all I need. How much did it cost? It cost, um, you know, uh, a guy was trying to buy my van and he was, um, he was the kind of guy that would, that would pay an absurd amount. And so I did a, like a sort of an estimate and I think it was around seven grand all in, including purchase of the van, you know, materials. And that was all, I may have also considered my own labor time with that one. When I got the van, it did run, but not well. One of the main things was all the vacuum lines were corroded, so I just had to replace all the vacuum lines. And um, a few like seals and stuff that I did, and uh, I think the rad hoses, like just stuff from it being sitting was just wearing out, you know? Um, but then also like brakes off, shocks on all four sides, um, you know, all the bushings, all the um, control arm ends. and I wanted it to be cheap, and I wanted it to be light. Um, I know a lot of people, like I see a lot of people doing a lot of really nice stuff in their vans, but I, the first thing I always think when I see these real thick live edge counters, I'm like, oh, it's beautiful, but that's so heavy. Like, so you're just killing your gas mileage. Um, so my plan was like, I wanted it, yeah, just cheap and light. Um, all this stuff that I made out of the one eight ply, that was on special, it was like 1098 a sheet, like for a four by eight sheet. And then, um, and it, like, it looks kind of nice. Like I just like stained it and, and did that. And, and that's why like, <laughs> you can see there's like still a gap here. Like I could have, I could have made it fill that space, but a four foot sheet this way would, was, is way cheaper. So I'm like, well, I can handle having a little strip there, you know? And I mean, this is hilarious. Like this dresser was just on the side of the road and I just, I put it there kind of as a temporary solution before I'd actually moved into the van. I was just doing a weekend trip. I just chucked it there and two years later, it's still here. <laughs> I'm a musician. I, I don't make very much money. Um, and hence why I live in a van. 
And especially I was like paying off, the plan was to pay off $10,000 worth of debt by moving into the van, um, which I did. Um, yeah, that's, that's, but that's the biggest reason. Like I'm a, I'm a sole entity. I don't have anybody to fall back on, but I have, uh, I have my van and, uh, and I like it. I would absolutely recommend this lifestyle. I think the people that, that need it the most are the people that are probably the most scared of it. You know, like we were saying, like it just really forces you to like, to like accept yourself and put yourself out there and like overcome tons of challenges. Like no matter how much you prepare, like things go wrong, things happen, your house breaks down and, and you have to take it to the mechanic or, or like I was saying, or like, oh, you run out of fuel for your stove halfway through cooking dinner and like, oh no, I didn't, I need to learn to plan ahead or whatever it is, you know? Um, I feel like it's, yeah, it's so challenging that like everybody should do it for a bit. <laughs> Probably like the most suited person, the most suited personalities are like, you know, outgoing people who already just are shameless. Um, and you know, people that have that sort of like nomadic drive, don't want to be in the same place all the time, like to feel like their life is an adventure. Let's see what we do have back here. Let's see, we got a tent. Looks like a backpack. It's a pad for the tent. A bunch of tools for keeping the van going. See what we have in here. Yeah, some more tools. This is some like uh, a hose charger for my drill. I've got a, I've got a guitar amp back there. Just chilling. Yep. More stuff to keep the van going. And this was a uh, this was one of those dehumidifier things, I guess. I don't know if it's still here. I got a jack, a couple of chairs. That's about it, really. My mom made these curtains for a house that I was living in years ago, and I kept them with me for a long time. And so I, I reshaped them to fit the van. Um, this is just some netting, and then I just glued magnets to it, because um, then you can still open them up. And um, there you go. No mosquitoes. My advice to somebody thinking about getting into van life is just do it. Just don't think about it. Don't overthink it. Don't try to figure out every detail you're going to get it wrong. You're going to get lots of stuff wrong and just accept that and just do it anyways. You know, it's like, I don't know. A friend of mine, a friend of mine was going on this bicycle tour. It was his first one. He was like riding to San Francisco and he, he went to the shop and he was like asking the guy, you know, like, Oh, like, what do I need to prepare for? And that's the advice. Uh, I, it still sticks in my mind. That's the advice. The guy said, he said like, you're, you're going to get a flat tire and you're not going to have the right tool. Like something bad is going to happen and you won't be prepared. So just don't even just start riding. You know, just start pedaling. That's the same thing with this. Like, just get a van and um, and start living in it. And then, as you do, you'll see what you need, and then you build it. Because, like, with with music, it's like I don't want to I don't want to add anything that doesn't need to be there. You know, like if if um, if we're arranging a song, it's like the song comes first, and anything else needs to be there to increase the impact of the song. And if it's not doing that, get rid of it. So that's kind of like a van life sort of philosophy in itself. It's like getting down to the essentials, you know? Maybe it's like essentialism, you know? Like do less but better, you know? Um, focus on the things that matter and then and do those things. Well, you can follow me. My name is Luke DeVille. I'm on Instagram and Spotify with my music. Um, and I also play with a bunch of great musicians that I wanna plug. First of all, Matt Storm. We just got, dropped a record with Matt, uh, I think it was last week, it might be this week. And, um, it's called uh, Like an Old Tree in the City. It's a great record. Super touching, introspective lyrics, very uplifting, kind of like a neo soul, bluesy vibe, you know? Um, I also got a big up Downtown Mischief here in Victoria, who I play with. This is like a, a funk jazz collective. I got a big up um, Caleb Hart and uh, Buckman Co., who I'm playing with this Saturday at Herman's Upstairs. I got a big up Bex. Bex is on Instagram. She's just coming up. Call Her Bex is her Instagram thing. Uh, great singer, again, super touching music, very, very personal, very, um, very moving and inspirational music. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend. Also, if you want to watch more Alternative Dwellings, we've got a playlist popping up right here, and we release new episodes every single Sunday, so consider subscribing.